I have to add my, my second camera to the screen because that's the one with the mic working. Thanks for letting me know. Hello, hello, good morning. I'm Aggie, I'm Agnes Friedlander. And um, welcome, welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go, I know, right? Uh, here I thought I had, I had started so well, I, you know? You just got to laugh at yourself, right? Anyway, um, welcome. We're going to be sketching wildflowers this morning. And this is my new setup. So yeah, there's going to be some some bumps along the way. But um, forgive me. Oh, I'm going to lower my seat just a time. Well, maybe not. I'll leave it here. So um, okay, what we're going to be doing is um, sketching today some wildflowers. And I found a bunch of really nice photos on Pixabay. And I shared them. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be basically showing you those uh, on my iPad, and we're gonna be drawing from a digital image reference. It's always better to draw from a digital image. And all I have uh, with me, just grab whatever you've got. It's gonna work just fine. These were some ideas on some wildflowers. <clears throat> Let's see if I can make myself smaller over here. Right, that's how I want to do that. And um, let's get this lined up just a little bit better. <clears throat> and we're gonna zoom in just a little bit. And um, what are your favorite wildflowers? Just let me know in the comments. Are there certain ones that you like better than others. I had to go look up, I, this is how bad I am. I had to look up wildflowers because I, I wasn't even sure, <laughs> you know, what some wildflowers are. Oh, that's what was wrong. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm in my studio in my home. My husband uh, just got up. He's working today. He's going to be getting ready for work. You might hear some sounds in the background. I've got a big old 85 pound doodle upstairs. <laughs> you might hear that. Please forgive me. <clears throat> um, and again, all I'm all I'm going to be using today. I've got um, a sketchbook here, a sketch pad <clears throat> from Dick Blick. This is an eight and a half by eleven. But you know, whatever doesn't matter. You could even grab some copy paper, um, a pencil, and a couple of weights of um, I, these are archival quality, acid-free line. You know, fine line markers is what they're called technically. These are by Prismacolor, but you could certainly use whatever brand you have. If all you have is a sharpie, <clears throat> hopefully you've got like a, a sharpie fine liner. That would work just great. You could even use a ballpoint pen. But I have two weights. If you have two thicknesses, that would be ideal. This one is um, a point, an 01, and this one is an 05. And, you know, there are lots of different brands out there. So, like, here's Sharpie. Um, oh, I also have an 08 in the Prismacolor. This was probably a three-pack set. Just, you know, go, go on Amazon. I'm going to be coming back on here and doing these ideally every day and um, maybe I'll make it a playlist on YouTube or something. Um, okay, quickly, I'm just gonna go through a couple of other brands. There's Derwent, Derwent Line Makers. These are really great also. I've got, um, I think a full set of these. Um, these Faber-Castell pit pens are also really, really awesome. So, you know, whatever, Whatever brand, Tombow, this is a really nice one that has a flexible nib. Whatever brand you like is totally fine. All right, so let's get started. <clears throat> All right, um, one thing I wanted to show you here is this is, <laughs> you, can even, you can even grab some brown paper bags. Okay, how awesome is that? What's nice about this is it's really cheap. You probably are getting it anyway when you go grocery shopping. And um, all I did on this was I, <clears throat> I sketched a couple of chamomile here. And I'll, I'll show you this one if you'd like. I used a really fine line. Let's see. I think I used, this is the 05. Oh, no, this is 05, right? 
That's the thicker one that I outlined afterwards. This is the O1. So see the difference there, the O5 and the O1, huge difference, right? And um, also, um, if, you, if you'd like, you can sketch with pencil first. That's what I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you some principles um, and mostly we're just gonna have fun and start noticing things. That's the big thing is, is to notice the details of some wildflowers. And this is gonna lend itself to right now in my membership, we're doing a project called the Titmouse Townhouse, <clears throat> fancy way of saying birdhouse. And um, I wanna do one more version. We, you know, I do a lot of glass and resin work, but uh, I wanted to do another one with a painted background. And um, I thought it would be nice to have some wildflowers in the background. So this is gonna lend itself to that. And also next month, we're gonna be doing a really large floral and it's gonna be flowers coming out of an umbrella that's upside, you know, an upside, a downward pointing umbrella. Oops, I just hit my camera. A downward pointing umbrella filled with flowers. That's um, a project for next month that we're gonna be doing. So I think sketching wildflowers like this is going to be kind of helpful. Okay. So here's one that I did this morning as I was kind of game planning what I wanted to do with you today. Here's another one. So the nice thing about starting out with a mid-tone paper like this is that you can then add um, a white highlight. And all I used for that, you can use if you've got a white pencil. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for commenting and saying hello. I'm so glad that you're here. I hope that you sketch with me. If you don't do it now, maybe you can come back and do it another time. These are wildflowers, they're gonna be fun. So you could just add uh, like a Prismacolor white pencil as highlights later on, or I think what I used on this one was this jelly roll. And again, you can get all this stuff on Amazon. Or maybe you have a white acrylic marker, that would work great too. So there's that buttercup, and then here are some more buttercups so there's always so many different ways that you can sketch even one subject. And I just want you to start noticing the details. And we're going to talk about that as we get started. So just thought I'd show that as a quick uh, idea. Okay, so I'm going to position, oh, just drop that. I'm going to position my screen right here. Let's see if I can get this going. Oops. And um, let's see, what do I want to start with? I wanted to start with a lot of times when we're learning how to uh, draw, we, we draw a flower straight on. Yay, you caught me live. I'm so glad you did. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Um, let's find a really simple one to start out with that's just straight on. That's pretty much straight on, but um, let me see if I have an even See, like I'm going to show you this one. Maybe we'll do like a daisy. That one would be, so these are pretty straight on, but there's one. Let's start with this one. So we're going to start off with this. Oh, I don't like that glare. So let's put this over here. Oh, wait. I'm going to have to figure out my positioning of things, so... Give me just a sec. This is my first time using this setup. So yeah. got to get everything to fit, right? Oh, it's bugging me, bugging me, bugging me. I'll get it. I'll get it better eventually. Okay. I think that's decent. Okay. Okay, so I think this is a daisy, right? So let's just draw this daisy, maybe we'll put it in a square. Okay, so <clears throat> um, let's just draw a square. Let's see how many do I want to put on here. Um, we're going to do this one, then we're going to do the two. And then we're going to do this third one. So hopefully that's what we'll get done today. These three versions of a daisy. So 
I might even add that one in. So we're going to fill this page with daisy sketches. So um, let's do a square one here. And, you know, we're just going to be kind of casual and fun with this. We're going to do this daisy right in here, nice and big, fill the whole square. Then we're going to do the two daisies. So let's put them here. We'll make it a little bit, maybe like this. And maybe this will be like this. And the second one is here. So I want you to start thinking in terms of how it fits into your the substrate that you're working on. Where is it going to land? <clears throat> so maybe those two like that. And then um, we might even do this one. That would be kind of cute. Just a real tall one. You know, maybe it's even being cut off by... By that and it's just kind of a little collage of daisies right maybe down here we'll say daisy d-a-i-s-y right sometimes i want to write daisy with an e <laughs> okay so and on this one we'll do these tall ones all right and you can't really totally see this can you let me see if i need to turn down my light a little bit i can even adjust my lighting just a bit is that better? Um, those were some really light sketch lines. I'll, I'll be working a little bit darker. Okay, so let's go to the first one. Look at this, the chamomile tea. That's a little more advanced. We'll do that one another day. This one is like, if you're, if you're, if you're really a beginner with sketching, um, start with this one. And so I've got a kneaded eraser. Anytime you want to refresh it, you just pull it apart like that and you get it a cleaner, a cleaner bit. And um, I like to start with really light sketch lines. I'll darken these in just a little bit. So a daisy has um, a really round center. We're looking straight on at this. How big are the length of the petals compared to the center? They're almost the same. The petals are maybe a little bit, um, shorter than the center. So that's a very important aspect. If you get nothing else out of this, try to get that part to, to correlate. The center, this unit of measurement is almost the same as this unit of measurement. Does that make sense? Oh, I'm getting the glare again. All right, so I'm gonna start with, um, now if you want, we could sketch with your pencil or you could sketch with, um, that's the 05. I don't want to use that. I keep forgetting. <laughs> Here's the 01. Okay, so let's start with this one. And I'm just going to start with that center and I'm going to draw the outline of it. So I'm going to zoom in and really look at it. And again, use your, um, look at the digital image. These are from Pixabay. And um, the best way to look at a reference image is digitally. So if I really look at that, it's kind of ziggy zaggy. But as long as I've got the outline um, of the major shape, I'll be okay. But you got to see that major shape first. In the United Kingdom, my favorite wildflowers are wild bluebells. Ooh, that would be a really good one to do. So I'm just gonna do ziggy zaggy lines. And Charlie is over here putting his nose on my shoulder. Hi, Charlie. Charlie wants to get in on the wildflower sketching. <laughs> and what I'm noticing is these are a bunch of little octagon shapes, actually. I don't think I ever noticed that before. So that's the really cool thing about um, observing nature is that you start to see the details of things that you never really noticed before and you just see the beauty and everything. Charlie, um, you're invading my space a little bit, dude. So they start out really small, really small. And I'm gonna simplify this a little bit. And then as we go outward, they get the circles get a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make them circles instead of octagons. And right around this point, they become projectiles or, or like petals. 
So I'm drawing a line to represent where the where the they actually become pe um, pro projectile petals that are sticking out. So Charlie, no, 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 lay down. <laughs> He's really pushing on me. Um, <laughs> poor Charlie. Um, who was it that said to me yesterday, you don't give him enough love. Yeah, he can never get enough love. So I like to kind of bounce around and put these larger, whatever large shape I'm going to use, whatever size, all around the outside so that I have a reference of where they need to be that size and where they need to start getting smaller, if that makes sense. So towards the middle, they're smaller. Out here, they're bigger. And of course, what you want to do is tightly fill this all in, which could take a little while. But again, when you're simplifying, maybe you're not going to fill the whole thing in. Let's just draw a few more connecting. Okay. And then I'm going to start drawing them as projectiles, which would be like a U shape. So some of the ones that edges that I already have on here are going to be these long U shapes. Hopefully you can see them. Let's get you a little closer. <laughs> Good morning, Charlie. Oh, the focus is changing. Sorry about that. Oh, I might be too close. So just continuing drawing those. And they kind of go all the way around like a clock. Make sure they're they're pointing inward. Okay. Next, we're going to start on the petals. Okay. So let's get this centered in here a little bit better. Um, oh, get this out of the way of the reflection. Okay. Oops. <laughs> uh oh. All right. So. We're just going to, um, let's start with this first one up here. And it's got a little, I don't know, little ticky ends to it. And then here's another one touching. So I'm going up to that guideline I created. And then there's a lot of them are kind of tucked behind other ones. Okay, so let's come down here and do this one. Doesn't have to be exact. Look at the spacing between it. Look at the overall direction of it, length of it, and all of that. Let's do another one over here. All right, so we're getting the idea. And again, I'm not doing it really exact, and that's totally fine. You don't have to, you know, do it exact. All right, then let's do one over here. These are just um, start to get a little bit shorter. My camera angle is just a little bit tilted. <clears throat> OK. 
continuing around. Some of them are gonna be behind. That's another really important thing. But just notice the main shapes of the petals. There's one that didn't really have um, the, the um, little um, flares on the end. It's kind of, it was kind of just rounded. Sometimes they have like a straight looking end to them. one in front of another one right here. And um, let's just put one more back here because it's empty. All right, so that looks pretty good. So now I can erase my sketch lines. And um, the really cool thing is to come in. Now there are shadows on this, which um, I really like. So let's let's actually draw the shadows on, and or at least the streaks. There's like little lines in there. So let's draw those on. And they start on one end and go all the way to the tip. And if you can kind of get the line to line up with, if you've got a bumpy end, get it to line up with the bumpy end, it really um, looks better. And I suppose you don't have to make all of the lines go all the way to the end, but I think it I think it looks better if you do. But that little bit of detail really makes a difference, doesn't it? Okay, now we're ready to do our thicker line. How are we doing so far? <laughs> oh, thank you. Hey, Betty, thank you for saying that. Uh, is it Bet or Betty? I, I'm sorry, I think I said Betty. It's probably Bet. <laughs> Good morning, Brandy. Is your phone plugged in? Just checking. You know what? I'm not using my phone. I am using a new camera. So yay. <laughs> Can anybody guess who Big Sweet Potato is? <laughs> um, oh, Shelly's going to sketch with me on Procreate. That is awesome, Shelly. Um, please share that with us when you do. That is awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it is pronounced Betty. You know, that was my mother's name. Um, funny story. I didn't find out that my mother's actual name was Elizabeth until I was like 30 years old. Nobody ever told me. Isn't that funny? It's kind of weird. But yeah, Betty. And she was from Arkansas. And so her middle name was Josephine. So everybody called her Betty Jo. <laughs> what show is that from? Does anybody know? I'm really dating myself now. Does anybody know what show that's from? <laughs> Betty Jo. All right. So now we're going to outline. We're going to kind of look for the outside of it with the thicker one. And only go around the outside. Petticoat Junction, that's right. <laughs> uh, 
I'm not an Elizabeth, although I love that name. I know I love that name too. And you know what? I don't mind if I don't perfectly line up with my previous line. I'm just going to accept that. Um, I'm looking at this as hand-eye coordination practice. It's the first day that I'm doing this in a while. I'm going to be rusty. I'm going to embrace imperfection. I'm just doing this to have fun because, you know, girls just want to have fun. Now I'm going to come back on this side. And if it does go down and touch that center um, of the flower, I'm going to, I'm going to outline around that too, like right here. Okay, now look at what a difference that's making. Forgive my hand, my hand is kind of blocking. Oops, went a little too far, but that's okay. All right, and then there are a couple of island holes that we're going to outline in here, which I think makes all the difference if you have these little islands. I love seeing those. Plan to have those in there. It just, you know, gives it more interest and detail, I think. You can even fake a couple in if you need to. Okay. Um, now we're going to go around the outside, the um, the center, sorry. And just outline that whole thing. And then if you wanted to, you could just highlight a few of these. And that's that one. Okay, so there's our first daisy. Um, now we're gonna do the two daisies, okay? Switch into the two daisies over here. And I'm gonna close up this pen, go back to my O1. All right, move this up a little bit. So you can kind of lightly see I have two, um, they're not perfect circles, they're ovals. And the main thing I want you to get out of drawing this one is that the second one is not looking straight at us. So we're gonna start noticing the direction. So think about direction, not all flowers point directly at you. Um, so the direction of this one, it's kind of going this way ever so slightly. This one's looking straight at us. So we would have almost a perfect circle. And again, I'm gonna look at the size of the center in relation to the petals. This one, the center seems a little bit smaller. So, um, so that's, a, and then the, the, you should always draw the stem as if it's coming out of that center. Um, this one, um, we're gonna go ahead and put the circle in here, the center, like here. And what I want you to notice is that it, it kind of comes like this and it's much wider on this left side of the flower because these petals are for, foreshortened. So it kind of looks like uh, <laughs> an egg in a way. So, so see how it's lopsided? And this one, the petal is coming out this, I mean, the, not the petal, the stem is coming out this way. So I am drawing it behind, and they do have big stems by the way. So I am drawing it through there. I can erase this later. And because I want you to see that stem, I'm gonna to try to plan when I draw this one, I'm gonna leave some holes that you can see that stem going behind there because people are gonna wonder why the stem isn't right here. So again, this is just a little bit more advanced. We're not doing straight up third grade daisies. We're doing, you know, we're noticing direction, okay, and perspective. So let's start with this one and um, get some of these petals in here. Actually, I'm going to start right, right with my O1. And um, let's see. This flower is in front. So I got to be a little bit careful about what I do there. So let's do this petal like this. To the center 
And then I'm going to leave this part showing. So I'm going to go right like that. We're not seeing the end of that one. It's going to get cut off by this one. And then let's do another peak of the stem. So this is a little bit more advanced. I, I, I kind of messed that one up, but that's okay. So we're thinking about more than one thing. You could even leave that whole thing showing right there. Um, I think I'm gonna hide it a little bit. So I'm gonna draw that stem in there from the other flower right now so I don't forget about it. Because that's the whole point is that we wanna see that. You want to see through and see that one. I also want to see it right here. And, you know, the more you do this, the more comfortable you'll get with drawing these, obviously. And it's totally okay to leave some spaces. Okay, so something like that. And then I'm going to draw this stem in here. Oh, I need one more petal. I don't want that much of that showing. And draw this stem right here. <laughs> I may have made it a little bit fat. Okay, so now let's go over to this second one. Um, so for this one, I'm going to draw. Now it's not going to be a perfect circle. It's going to be a bit of an oval. And again, it's going to have some zigzagginess to it. A little, you know, bumpy. And here it's real important that I have the end of this petal overlapping that one. And I'm just going to look at the angle of it. And if you need to draw it in with pencil first, that's totally fine. Then there's another one, which I can't make overlap, but that's OK. So then right here, it kind of changes direction. It goes like that. So right here, we're seeing the stem again. So that's good. The hardest part is getting that stem in there. Another one of these. So look at the direction again. This one's a little bit shorter. And there's another one that's almost bending behind it. I kind of messed that one up. So I'm going to fake another one in there. OK. Then down here, there's one with a space around it. Let's get this weird flat looking one in here. This one, this one goes like this. And again, these are going to be longer on this side. We're almost there. I'm draw the one that's kind of in front first. 
And there's another one here and a little one behind. Then there's a couple of short ones here. I think I got it. And then let's see, maybe another one here. And there's a couple behind. Okay, so something like that. I think I think we're going to get the sense of it. The main thing is, this is where the center was, right? And they're really little circles starting to get bigger. And then when we get close to the edge, they become projectiles, U shapes. Same thing with with this, but we want to have the center a little bit over to the side. So the center is going to be more over here. And this is going to be lopsided also where these projectiles start. And also because we're kind of looking at it from the side, they're going to be um, make more U shapes pointing in the direction that the flower is pointing. that makes sense? Okay, so let's draw in our outline with a thicker marker now. And I'm going to start with uh, the, big, the bigger one on the right. How are we doing? We okay? Good morning, Andy. How are you? Good morning, good morning. <laughs> We're just doing some sketching here, some daisies. All right, so here we go. We're going to do this outline. I'm gonna start right here. All right, I am going to continue it around the petals and add the stem in after. And come back around this way. Okay, kind of am drawing that stem at the same time. Oops, I kind of <laughs> kind of changed that up a little bit, but that's okay. It's easy to get confused by all the lines. Okay, then I'm going to outline around the center the zigzagginess. Put these little base triangles in. Wherever I can. Okay. I'm simplifying. Oh, I didn't do my little lines. I'll do those next, the, the interior lines. So let's erase this. It's a little confusing. Always looks better after you erase the extra lines. Good morning. Good morning. So we're going to do one more after this and call it a day. And this will be your daily dose of sketching. <laughs> 
All right, let's do the thick outline around this one. Now, hopefully we're going to get the sense that this has, that it's turning that way. The direction of the stem really does help quite a bit. And you really do need to make the um, emphasis on these projectiles on the right side sticking out. So I don't think I'm even going to. I'm just going to hint at a few on the other side. I think I did it. It could be a little bit stronger, but I think it's passable. So then I'm going to go back to my, um, my O1 and add the thin lines in. I think adding the thin lines in is my favorite part. <laughs> What's your favorite part? Andy says she's happy to finally be able to catch a live. Me too. Oh, I didn't do the little interior triangles on this one. Let me do that. Just gonna fudge one in there, one in there, and there. Yay! This line needs to be here so that we really read that. I think you do read that stem going behind there, right? You can see it, right? And then sometimes it's nice to also. Um, just put a little outline. Around your sketch. Doesn't have to be perfect. Alright, so one more we're going to do the, the tall ones in the field. And then, you know, you could add some watercolor over this. Um, <clears throat> wouldn't that be fun? Of course, it's not going to show up really well on paper, but you could use marker. All right, here's the other one. So now what's happening with these, what do we notice about these? They're pointing upward. They're pointing every which way. Some of them are not even open all the way. So we're going to try to capture that. And this is just going to be a really tall, um, really tall and simple sketch. And I'm going to do this one with pencil first. So I'm going to just try and be really loose and start down here and go all the way up to the top to, to see this one that I like. And I'm going to be using continuous line for this one. So I've got I see one right here. I'm looking at this one right here. And then I see another bud right next to it and another bud. So I'm going to try to put these 
um, there's another bud here, which connects to this flower here. So I'm just gonna try to draw all these kind of connecting with each other. Now there's another bud behind this one, but I'm not gonna put that in because that would be probably a little confusing. So then this one kind of comes down like this, this stem. And you know, usually there's like triangular um, parts to the stem. I think that's connected to that. And then as we come down here, um, let's see, I see another, another one right here. These are like little buds that aren't really opened yet. There's a flower behind here. Um, here's a big flower, kind of big. It's mostly pointing up. Here's one that's kind of facing us. Then one goes off that way, so we're not even going to see that one. Here's a bud. Maybe there's a bud here to help us kind of come back in. A couple more unopened buds. And once you start kind of seeing the pattern of what's happening, you can just almost just fake it in, you know. And then there's a bunch of really weird leafy lines, but I don't want to put too much down here. I want to bring the attention up here. And um, sometimes if you could try to do a triangle, maybe this is my triangle here. Um, it's a good idea to use a triangle to, to make a nice composition. So I'm going to try and make these three the main ones. Maybe I shouldn't have this one so noticeable because that's going to steal the show. So we start learning these composition and design principles, even with sketching, which is why I do want to um, bring that into the uh, lessons with the membership. Okay, so we're going to grab our marker. We're going to start doing this one now. And so mostly, I think my favorite one is, is this one. So I have to kind of hold it open. And it's almost like these are pointing up. And then it comes around this way. Okay, and then there's a couple of petals going down. I'm making it a little bit bigger because it's going to be the the main one. And then what I'm noticing is that there's two like really flat ones. You can't even really tell that they're petals, but there's two really flat ones coming out to the side. And I do see kind of almost like it looks like a bowl shape. It's a little bit more shaded in the center, so all right, and then I'm going to draw this stem coming down. And then I did have this one here kind of cutting it off. So I'm going to roughly, just roughly draw that in. Maybe this one's not going to have as much like detail to it. I'm drawing it a lot quicker. Okay, um, then I'm going to jump over here to this interesting one. These are kind of long, spiky looking shapes, really. And forms into a stem. Okay, then there's another one back here. Let's come back up to this, this one. Okay, this one's in the foreground first. So let's do this weird looking bud. Very simple. We're gonna do this one, very simple. And the stem goes this way. And then this stem comes this way. 
And there's another bud that goes off this way. And I'm just going to draw that as a simple circle. So I got my stem drawn in. This bud is in front of that flower. So I'm going to do this one first, this, this one right here. This one's kind of longer. All right, now we're ready to do this daisy. Well, we got two daisies here. This one's bigger. Just drawing those downward petals. The main thing is to look at the basic shape and the direction. That's really what you're looking for, shape and direction. Okay, then there's one back here. I see a petal, another petal, another petal. Then I see the round top of it. And a couple more petals. And I kind of drew into that one, but that's okay. Then this stem comes down. to bring that down. All right. Um, just got to decide who's going to be in front. We'll bring this down more. Um, this one has a petal. Let's connect, I mean a stem. Let's connect this stem to this one maybe right here and bring this down. This Since this is our main one, we do want to kind of show it going all the way down. Maybe this bud is connected to it. Hopefully this isn't getting too confusing. It doesn't even have to make total sense. You just have to um, follow where you are at. And again, you could just do continuous lines that are overlapping each other. That, that always winds up looking really prettier than you think, I promise. Um, here's another stem I'm gonna do with really abstract uh, stuff down here. Another stem going off. Maybe one going this way. We're going to get real abstract as we get down there. Um, let's see. So there's just a couple more up here that I want to put. There, there is a flower here, but that's behind. So I'm going to leave that one out after all. Let's just put a couple more um, these stemmy flowers in and kind of call it a day. Okay, and I'm going to erase all these lines behind. Because it's probably a little confusing looking. Okay, and then we can decide where, you know, where do we really want the most emphasis and use our thicker line. Yeah, the 05, right? <clears throat> oh, well, I still need to put some of these lines in like we did before, right? These are just going to be a little bit simpler version. So part of sketching is learning how to simplify. Okay, now I'm ready to, um, and you know, sometimes there's interesting little leafy things that come off of the stem. And that's what gives it that beautiful, you know, wild look. There's also a really um, interesting, almost fern-like type of um, leaf happening in here.
So I'm trying to get some of that in there. And that's going to make it interesting because it's so different. And it's also giving direction. So I can kind of direct the eye into my composition with these hairs. Up here, I don't have that, the, the, the ferny texture, because I really want to make that simpler and cleaner and that and then it will have the that will make it the um, focal point okay so now for the thicker line oh I think I was off camera sorry about that let me lift this up a little bit again so um, for the thicker line I'm just going to come in and outline you know, around my exterior again. Find all the exterior shapes. You know, you can you can decide where where you have the thick line and where you don't. It's you know totally your decision. No right or wrong, really. You know, and you can just leave it like that, or you could decide to outline those, but I don't think I want to. So now I'm going to come in and do my interior a little bit. I do want to outline this. And I can make this one much simpler um, by not really putting the bumps in the middle and things like that. So that's it. What do you think? Fun? Will you try this? <clears throat> um, maybe I'll just do... All right. Thank you so much for joining me. We're right at about an hour. I went a little bit over. If you enjoyed this, <clears throat> please comment below if you'd like me to do more of these with you. I've got plenty of other really nice pictures. We could do poppies, buttercups, clover, um, lavender, forget-me-not, wild rose. Wouldn't that be fun? And tell me what you think in the comments.
if um, if you'd like to do them this way, where is it? Do you want to do them this way where we do it on a mid-tone paper and um, add a light color? Let me know. Let me know. Um, I had fun with this and I hope you did too. And I will talk to you later. Let me figure out how to end this broadcast. <laughs> um, oh, well, let's look at the comments. Um, great. Thanks. Oh, I saw that one. Rye Talent. Rye Talented Aggie. Okay. <laughs> Probably a typo. Uh, very cool watching the process. Yay. Glad you liked it. Wait, let me, let me, uh, how do I switch this back? Let's go this way. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, fun. I want to try this. Good, good. Would this be, wait, I'm trying to show this comment. <laughs> Hold on. Very cool watching the process. Fun. And I want to try this. Good, good, good. I hope you do. Do you have the markers? Do you have any markers at all? You could even just do it with one weight of marker, but you do see the difference. If you've got two different weights, it can make a big difference. Um, would this be good to try watercolor over? Yes, or even marker. Thanks, Aggie. You are very welcome. Um, I would like to see more. I'd love to do a dandelion. I know, dand I love dandelions. Andy says, I'll definitely try this. This person says they enjoyed it. Awesome. Thank you so much for hanging out. And I hope you have a wonderful Saturday. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.